Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. Today's uh, topic is uh, is near and dear to my heart. It, it's one of those things that, before I dive into the slides, I, I just want to share a couple thoughts with everybody. So, first off, this is uh, inspired by chapter three of my book, uh, you know, Relationship Marketing and Digital Word, True Connections. Um, and it's not an exact take on it because, I, you know, I started thinking about the presentation in a little bit more detail. And I thought, well, how do we actually align user intent better? And what are some of the things that we've learned in running a, a conversion rate optimization agency over the years that, that we see as obvious, but may not be obvious to everybody else, right? And I know that sounds strange, but here's, here's where I got to this. When we present a lot of this type of information to our clients, we constantly are getting like an aha moment from them. And so given that we're getting aha moments from clients, we thought, you know what, let's, um, let's, uh, let's, do this, uh, let's do this in a webinar and let's see if, if it indeed generates some aha moments you know, for the audience. And so all kidding aside, folks, um, I would love your feedback after was, because this is a little different. So I would love to know, were there some aha moments? Did this make sense? You know, was this too basic? Um, I think there's some really interesting things in here, but I've been known to be wrong. So let's get started. So with that in mind, uh, you know, really it all comes down to this. You cannot improve what you do not measure. I know that's obvious, folks. I know that's obvious. But when we onboard a new client, a lot of times what we find out is that, you know, in some instances, they don't have analytics installed, they don't have heat mapping, and, and they're just generally dissatisfied with their revenue, you know, or their lead flow or their subscriptions, and they actually don't have analytics installed, all right? So, so you really have to know what you should measure and, and what those measurements mean and what you should do about those measurements. So, the first thing I'm going to share, and this is a little weird, and, and I, I apologize if this is conversion rate optimization 101. I get it, all right, but I don't know everybody on the audience, so so we'll just have a couple slides like this. So conversion rate is basically the number, uh, you know, of visitors on a website that complete the desired goal, all right. So it's a percentage. So if you have a hundred visitors and one does the thing you want, you have a one percent conversion rate. That's pretty straightforward. Interestingly enough, this next set, uh, sentence or next paragraph there is, is not something that, that clients always come to us with this knowledge. There are macro and micro conversions. And what are the difference between a macro and a micro conversion? So if you're an e-commerce site, a macro conversion is somebody buys something. Um, a micro conversion on an e-commerce site is they put it to the cart. So you might say, well, aren't those kind of the same thing? Well, they're not because they didn't give you money yet. So that's the difference between a macro and a micro. In a lead gen site, it is a macro conversion as they filled out the form, you know, or they made the phone call, whatever it is. Let's say they fill out the form and they submit the form to you and you've got a lead. A micro conversion is they start the form, but they didn't hit submit. And so in a subscription site, uh, site there's the same kind of things. They subscribe or they start the process. But micro conversions don't have to be even that far along in the process. A micro conversion could be that they take the first step in your marketing or sales funnel, or it could be that they go from page to page. Now, why would we care about micro conversions? Because at the end of the day, the macro conversion is the one that's making you all the money, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of obvious. Well, Sometimes by focusing on micro conversions, it allows you to fix the user experience through the journey to figure out where those roadblocks are that people are stumbling on as they're getting to that end goal. It also is very useful knowing what your micro conversions are when you're running tests. So if you're using like Google Optimize and you're running a test, knowing that you're getting people further and further and further into your funnel, all right, absolutely will get you a step further and further closer to those uh, macro conversions. So macro and micro conversions are something that I would like you to just to keep in the back of your mind today. 
right? So what is the bounce rate? Uh, so a bounce rate, it's the percentage of visitors to a particular website who navigate away from the site after viewing only one page. So, so and again, I apologize if this is conversion rate optimization 101, but it's different from an exit rate in that an exit rate is what page are they leaving on? You know, what's the exit rate on, on the different page? But a bounce rate is, you know, what page are they landing on? And then they only look at that one page and they leave. Now, bounce rate is very much an indication of whether or not your page is meeting the visitor's needs. Um, and if you're not meeting the visitor's needs, then they absolutely bounce, okay? So let's go a step further. A lot of times what we see is bounce rates uh, that make no sense whatsoever, okay? So if you look at this, they said they had a bounce rate of 40% and then it dropped down to like 7%. I promise you, I promise you, that this, this website does not have a bounce rate of 7%. I promise you they don't, okay? So what happens is a lot of times analytics get set up incorrectly or something changed. So obviously something changed in this November, December timeframe um, and it messed up their analytics. Another example of this is, uh, is here. So the bounce rate dropped to zero. I really don't think the bounce rate dropped to zero. And I'm pretty sure in May of this year, you know, it didn't drop to zero again, all right? And so, you know, what causes this kind of thing to happen? Anything from you've got, uh, uh, you know, Google Tag Manager installed and you've got Google Analytics and you're triggering things uh, twice, or you, you've got something on your website that does a pop-up that's counting up as a, as a second page, or you've got a, a redirect in there. So they land on one page, but you're redirecting them to another. There's all sorts of ways to make a mess out of your analytics, uh, especially the bounce rate. And, and this goes back to, if you're not measuring it correctly, there is no way that you're gonna be able to improve it. So, so you really have to make sure that your analytics are not a one and done. You wanna make sure that you are looking at your analytics um, and I would tell you, at least on a weekly basis. At Site Tuners, we look at the analytics on a weekly basis for everybody. And then we have monthly meetings for ourselves. Even. We do this not just for our clients, but for ourselves, where we look at the analytics and we look at what changed from last month, what, what's improved, what went down, and we try to figure out what it is. Analytics are not a one and done thing. So you really need to stay on top of them to be able to know what's truly happening within your website. So um, there's some other things that could throw off your, um, uh, your, your bounce rate statistics. I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. If you have a site where uh, they can log in for tracking orders or they could log into their account and they go to your homepage and there's a login place on it, um, you wanna exclude the people that are logging in because when they log in, a lot of times what that's doing is it's counting as another step in the process. Well, do you really think that doing that is telling you what your real bounce rate is? No, because those people have a very different user intent. If your website is there to generate new sales or potentially new subscriptions or new leads, and you've got people logging in, it's taking away or, or masking the problem with your bounce rate based on uh, users have a very, very different uh, idea of what it is they're looking for. Hopefully that's, uh, that's fair enough. The other thing is, is goal completions or whether it's e-commerce rates or goal completions. Um, one of the things that we see all the time, uh, people say to us, well, our conversion rate you know, is 1% or our conversion rate is X percent or our whatever it is, all right? It doesn't matter what it is, but if I were to, actually, let me stop sharing my screen for a second. So you see me, this is gonna uh, be crazy, but if this is a scale of, of zero to, we'll say 100%, and you're at 1% in your conversion rate, your conversion rate doesn't just hum along at 1%, like bzzz, it just doesn't do that. It basically surfs the line, it goes above, it goes below, it goes above, it goes below. So one of the things you have to look at is, is or understand is your, your, your conversion rate will always surf the line. The goal is to get it to surf the next line that's higher up in the conversion, okay? So as long as you've got that upward trend and if your baseline is now at 2% and you're surfing above and below 2% or and then you're surfing above and below 3%, it doesn't matter. 
But understanding, you know, that your conversion rate varies on a daily uh, basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis is important because having the discussion, even internally in your own organization of, you know, last week our conversion rate was 2% and this week it's 1.9%. That's really not a discussion, you know, to be having. You need to be looking at, is it surfing that versus humming along? All right, let me go back to sharing my screen here. And, uh, and it's the same, uh, you know, from goal completions to obviously e-commerce rates. And this shows it even more. You know, if you look at this thing bumping up and down here, right? I mean, this is all over the map. So when you're trying to improve your conversion rates and you're looking at them and you're saying, well, well, for example, looking at this, what would you actually, what number you were, are you improving against? Now, it looks like it peaked at about 7% here. But it also has been down, it looks like at, you know, one and a half percent. So, and it's up and down like a yo-yo. So how are you going to improve that? And part of the answer to that is to really understand bounce rates. Because one of the things that we've learned over the years is there is an amazing, and I do mean amazing correlation between bounce rates and conversion rates. So let's talk a little bit about how bounce rates affect conversion rates. Uh, because that's the whole point of this discussion. And then after I go in through what you should look at and what you might be able to do, I'm going to show you some live examples of uh, a homepage, a landing page, a blog page, and all of those things and talk about the elements that lower the bounce rate. But the first step in this process is to make sure that we're all on the same page, that bounce rates and conversion rates are really tied together in an interesting way. So with that in mind, you know, we look at this and you look in Google Analytics and it turns out that, you know, a lot of times the, the, the numbers that are shown in Google Analytics are wrong. And like I said earlier, there could be all sorts of reasons why the, the numbers in there are inaccurate. You can't just look at what's there and say, oh, our bounce rate is 10.61%. No, you can't do that. You actually have to dig a little deeper to figure out what is my real bounce rate and what should I be doing to figure out what my bounce rate is. Now, in a perfect world, you have your analytics set up correctly and you have excluded any kind of login information. You're, you're, not, you're not double counting anything. You don't have redirects that are throwing it off. So in a perfect world, right, your analytics are working for you. But in a less than perfect world, you have to go back and say, well, how do I make that a little bit better? So in a, in a different example here, you know, we've got the number of starting pages and the number of drop-offs, right? So if we know that we've got, for the sake of argument, 542,000 people drop out out of 862, that means the real bounce rate here is 62%, right? So there was some other weird counting that was going on. So we want to use something as an estimate to be able to figure out what reality is. Once we know what reality is on the bounce rate, we have a much better opportunity to be able to potentially improve what we're looking at. I haven't even gotten to how you improve it or what we're looking at first. Step one is figuring out what your real bounce rate is. All right. So what we do when we see wacky bounce rates is we basically do a little bit of math. Okay. We take, you know, the number of sessions, you know, and, and the number of drop-offs, and then we do a little bit of math and you're certainly welcome to copy the math. You know, uh, one of my, my team members said, well, that's kind of our secret sauce. And I'm like, you know what, guys, if this helps somebody succeed, then let them understand, you know, how we get there. So this gives you a flavor for how we calculate, um, bounce rate when the bounce rate reported in analytics is just truly unbelievable. And hopefully that makes a, a ton of sense. All right. So now when we talk to people, um, so when we talk to people, and I'll, I'll just say a quick hi to Jose also. <laughs> so no worries. Uh, and the question Jose asked is, will we be sharing the recording? And yes. Uh, and we typically share the recording. It, it takes us a couple of days to get it out, but we will do that. All right. So let's talk about this screen here, which is, which is in here. So the first thing is one of those, what are you telling me questions? 
If you look on the left-hand side where it says pages per session, and, and on the left it's, it says bounced users, so one page per session. Well, duh, that's obvious. That's, that's what a bounce is. You know, it's one page per session. But the users that don't bounce, so what we're doing is we're separating out the users that bounce to look at the ones that don't bounce to see like really how are they engaged with our website, right? So, um, so users that don't bounce stay on average of, in, in this instance, five point almost six pages. Now here's what's interesting. We also added on the, on the side that, uh, you know, in this example, uh, converting versus non-converting visitors, right? And it doesn't matter whether this is an e-commerce store or a, a lead gen or subscription, right? But the people that, that don't convert visit on average only a little less than two pages, but the people that are converting are visiting almost seven pages, right? So it really comes down to engagement. Now, in fairness, depending upon the kind of site you have. And I've seen examples of this where the, the non-converting people might be two pages and the converting people might be 12 pages because it's an e-commerce site and there was multiple pages in the funnel. I get that, right? But this shows engagement. And, and really the whole point of this discussion is about engagement. And that's why bounce rate is so important. So if I if we look on the screen here, and I'll just draw on this just to highlight your attention, you know, what effect does keeping a visitor from bouncing have on your site? It's all about aligning that user intent. So if we can align that user intent and we can get the visitor engaged, they are more likely to, uh, to do the desired conversion action, whatever that is. All right, let's drill down just a little bit deeper here. And uh, so if we look at what's the conversion rate for a bounced user, well, hello, it's going to be zero, right? But if the conversion rate on a, on a website is, is, for sake of argument, you know, one point something percent, if you look at the users that don't bounce you, and you calculate your conversion rate on the noun bouncing user, it gives you a, another indication about what those people are looking for. And in this example here, we're looking at what happens for those people, not only on their conversion rate, but also how much time do they spend on the site? So a converting visitor spends basically twice as much time on the site than a non-converting visitor does. And so really all of this comes back to that whole engagement, which really goes back to what we talk about in the book, answering the three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? And, and bouncing, I will tell you, bouncing really is about that number one question. Am I in the right place? If the, your visitor does not feel like they're in the right place, then they're gonna bounce and your time on site goes down. If they feel good about it, which is the second question, how do I feel about it? they will spend more time on your site and they will read more pages. So the first two questions together, am I in the right place and how do I feel about this are directly related to your bounce rate and time on site. And the third question, what am I supposed to do here? That is, is basically related to your conversion, um, whatever your conversion is, the download, the buy, and so on. But if you haven't answered the first two questions correctly, you're never going to get people to the third question, which is, what am I supposed to do here? Because they've already left because it didn't match what they were looking for. And or, you know, they just don't feel good about your site. So let's drill down yet a little bit further. Um, analyzing bounce rates. Well, what are we going to do to analyze the bounce rate? So we create scattered charts, uh, and, and before this, you think this is like an eye test or something weird, let me explain what this is. Um, we look at um, the, uh, the number of visitors to a site and the bounce rate, and, so, and the number of visits to a page. So for example, if we drew a line that above 65%, and we're generalizing, I get that, that above 65%, is a bad bounce rate, okay, is, is something that we're concerned about, 
then we'd want to deal with everything in the red or not. And the answer is no. Because here, if we look here on this, oh, and it's this line here, I'll just go longer. This line here says, how many visitors? Well, basically the, people, the dots that are on this side and each one of these dots represents a page. Basically they had two people in a squirrel visiting the page. So who cares what the bounce rate is? But if we move, and I guess I'm gonna to have to change my color here so that it shows up on the red. But if we look here, okay, and even here, you know, that concerns me because here we have more sessions with a high bounce rate. And I would suggest that even underneath here, some of these, you know, would be really concerning. So what you want to do, and this is a very easy way to, to basically deal with the low hanging fruit. If you can identify the pages on your website that have a large number of sessions and a high bounce rate, and then you can say, all right, looking at these pages, what are we missing that they're bouncing and they're not engaging with us? And not all websites are created the same. Not all pages are created the same. And so, for example, here's another uh, scatter chart. And, and this one, most of their pages, it looks like are, very, are, are not visited that much. But if you look, they got a lot of things in the red up on the top, and that's problematic. Now, let's talk about different types of pages just for a second. Um, the first thing I would say is not all pages are created equal. So for example, if you have a lot of visits and a very high bounce rate on a pay-per-click landing page, uh, there's no other way to say this. You got a problem you're in trouble, you need to fix it immediately. But if you have a very, very high bounce rate and a lot of visits to, I'll call it a blog post page, well, blog post pages uh, are different than a landing page for lead gen or subscriptions or whatever you're doing, right? A blog page, you expect to have a higher bounce rate uh, to, to, because they're looking for a piece of content, they did a search, they saw a piece of content, they read your content and they're done. Having said that, and I'm going to show you an example later of a blog page and how you do something called content for conversion, where you can take high, vo high volume blog pages, for example, and turn those into conversion pages. Now, will a blog page ever convert at the same level that a PPC landing page does? Well, I'm just going to say for your sake, I hope not, because if it does, something's wrong somewhere probably on your PPC side. But Having said that, okay, um, you know, we will, uh, uh, so the reports, uh, so Marcus asked where we're getting the reports. These report we create uh, data studio reports um, uh, to figure, to be able to analyze what's in, uh, uh, what's in analytics, because frankly, in analytics and even in, in GA4, you look at the stuff and you know, it, your eyes could roll around in the back of your head. And so we like to, to create uh, data studio reports that, uh, that make it really easy to understand what we're seeing, you know, in, in, in data. All right, hopefully that I answered the question, Marcus. Anyway, so the point being here, not all pages have, you know, a high bounce rate or, or are created equal. So you need to figure out is a bounce rate of 80% reasonable on this page versus on this other page, right? So you just you have to apply a, a, a kind of your own filter on it, a little common sense, figuring out what makes the most sense for your organization. Okay, so we also look at things by device type, all right? And we look at what are the goals and the bounce rates and so on. And, uh, and I will tell you, this is a kind of a bad example. The next one might be a little bit better, but this is mostly red and green, all right? And uh, because, it, oh, there's a couple whites in here, but uh, you know, the colors shading are things that we're looking at and say it's a problem. So, so if you look at things and we say, uh, you know, what's the, what, you know, we got paid search, paid search with a, with a high um, goal conversion rate, you know, look at these, right? These are nice, right? And look at the bounce rate, but you look at it and the, the tablet is doing better than the desktop, which uh, is, is the desktop's doing the best. And if I do a quick math thing here, 
Um, these numbers are actually interesting. The standard, just from our experience, the standard uh, uh, numbers here for uh, uh, conversion rate across the different types of desktop, tablet, and mobile. And I'll make up to, I'll just, if the desktop converted at 3% for sake of argument, I would expect your, uh, in a non-optimized site for your mobile to convert at 1% and your tablet to convert at 2%. That's typically what we see when people come to us, right? So that just gives you a flavor. But my point here is in looking at this uh, and drilling down a little bit further, what you're doing is you're getting a better picture of what problem it is you're trying to solve. Now, if I drill down, you know, uh, again, another example, you'll notice here, now we're looking at desktop and we're saying, what are the entrances? What are the pages per section? So, and we're looking at it, not just by the pages, but we're trying to determine, you know, how are we doing with our different uh, channels? You know, organic search is usually one of the tougher ones, you know, to, 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 to fix. But I'll tell you that organic on this one, if I saw an organic search and it was 43% and someone came to us with that, I'd be pretty impressed with that as a starting point. So, you know, the bounce rates here for, for this one aren't, you know, a bad starting point in looking at this. But paid search uh, you always want, because you're putting money out for that, right? You always want to make sure that your paid search is converting well and not bouncing. Let me show you a couple other, um, uh, uh, yeah, my icons are, are misaligned. It wouldn't be the first time I've done that. And so, uh, so, yeah, probably on the previous screen. Yeah, look at that. All right, we'll fix that before we send that out. You can't take me anywhere, Stephen, but thanks for pointing that out. All right. All right, anyway. Uh, back to this, you also are looking at, you know, who's coming here, bounce rates versus traffic, right? And, and so here we're looking at this, and basically what this one's showing us is whatever the upstream messaging is, the upstream messaging is not attracting the traffic at the same rate, which is fine. But if we look at the bounce rates, you know, here, you know, in this instance, they're, they're pretty similar. If we go to a different um, uh, uh, view and a different site, now what we're saying, bounce rate versus conversion rate, and this is what I was talking about earlier. If you look at, on the, on the left-hand side, the conversion rates uh, are higher and the, uh, the bounce rates are lower. So whatever we're doing to attract traffic in one instance is fine, but we are not appealing to both men and women uh, the same way. So that could be a problem unless you have a product that's specifically geared towards one or the other, you know, and I'm not making a judgment call. I'm just saying that when you're looking at these kind of things, you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, if I have a product that is, or a service or whatever you're selling or trying to do, if that should be, you know, non-gender specific, then, then in fairness, you want to make sure that you're appealing to both equally. And if you're not, then, uh, and we've seen this a couple of times where, you know, and, and forgive me, no disrespect meant to anybody, but where the marketing team, for whatever reason, is primarily male or primarily female, or the person in charge is male or female, and they dictate what they think, all right, which we always call the highest paid person's opinion, the HIPAA. And when they do that, as opposed to using the data, um, what happens is it skews it to the way they think, which could potentially skew the results. All right. So um, this is one of those examples. Uh, you know, people talk about diversity. But diversity is not a buzzword, guys. You know, by having people on your teams that that have different points of view and life experiences, you can increase, lower your bounce rates and increase the uh you know, the conversion rate, and it shows up in the numbers. So let's play uh, a what if for a sake, a sake of argument. So what do you do when you address a bounce rate? So we've seen things like this over and over again. If the bounce rate was for the sake of argument, 62%, and we lowered it by 10%, we could get approximately a 10% increase in the conversion rate. And I will tell you that when we bring on a client, depending on what we're doing with them, but lowering bounce rate 
as a way of improving conversion rate, because it's all about aligning that user intent, is one of the things that we look at right away to figure out, you know, does this make sense or not? All right. So hopefully all of this um, made some sense. But the question you should be asking yourself is, well, that's nice. Okay, you showed us where to look and, and you can create your own data studio reports to do this, or you can look at the raw data. I mean, that's fine. Some people are really good at looking at the numbers. I personally, you know, my eyes start to roll around in the back of my head. All right, so I like to see the, the I hate to say it, I like to see the pretty charts, but, um, uh, and uh, especially ones where the icons are in the right place, right guys? But all kidding aside, what do you do here? And the first thing you gotta do is figure out what pages you wanna address but then understand that you know all pages are different. And here's the thing, every page on your site that has a bounce rate is a landing page, whether or not you expected it to be a landing page. Now, let me, that, I, I'm hopefully that's obvious, but, but just in case, you know, you have no real control over, let's say SEO, right? I, I mean, we could argue SEO back and forth, but you you don't know what page they're going to land on your site. So a product page might be your a landing page by accident, a category page, a blog page, you know, some content page. So every page that winds up as a landing page, whether you planned it or not, if it has a bounce rate, they're landing. And if it's got a large volume and it's got a high bounce rate, then you particularly want to go fix that, right? And you want to address that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some tuned pages. I'm going to show you a dedicated landing page. I'm going to show you a home page. I'm going to show you a content page, a category page, a product page, and a blog page. And, and keep in mind, not all pages are created equal. So I would expect, if you're doing it right, that your dedicated landing pages should have the highest conversion rate, hopefully, right? Your home pages, all right, because if you're assigning, um, uh, uh, you know, as if that's the landing page and you track back to, they landed on this page, did they convert, right? Then your home pages, you know, should come next unless you've got some really spiffy category pages or some kind, you, or a content page. I'm going to show you a couple different variations on this and then we're gonna talk about them, all right, piece by piece. All right, let me pull up, uh, and hopefully you see uh, uh, an example of a landing page, uh, and uh, one of my team members on, we see the landing page, right? Just double checking. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry, Stacey. <laughs> so, you didn't know there was gonna be a test today, I know. All right, anyway, um, so this is a very high converting um, uh, landing page. This landing page, uh, and they've got a high converting site that we helped them design, but this landing page converts uh, on PPC at two and a half times uh, their base conversion rate. Uh, and that's, so what did we do here that, that makes this make sense? Well, we took out a lot of the leaks on here. We added a ton of trust on here. And we made it really clear what it is you get. And we tested this and we've been using this for a while. So basically it's all about getting a quote. We're saying what, you, you know, why you, why this is a good thing. We've got trust here. We've got get the best insurance rates here, get my quote, because that's what they want. All of this matches what I'll call the upstream messaging from the PPC um, ads. If I scroll down a little bit for those, you know, you'll notice there's not a lot going on here, but as I scroll down, you know, we've got more trust. We're using the, the, uh, the types of insurance that they could potentially get as trust. We're using client reviews as trust and we're using um, as seen on as trust. And again, the get a quote now is, is still there. And there's a version of this for uh, mobile also. So this is, is simple, but really what it's doing here in this instance is we are aligning with that upstream messaging so that when they get here, they don't bounce. You know, this page has got a, a fairly low bounce rate and a very high conversion rate because it's, it answers the three questions. Am I in the right place? Because it matches the upstream messaging. 
How do I feel about it? It's modern and it's got massive amounts of trust. And what am I supposed to do here? Well, oh my God, if you don't know what you're supposed to do here, well, I don't even know what to say to that, right? So it's really obvious what you're supposed to do. That should make it easy. So this is an example of a high performing landing page and it's got the elements to answer all three questions easily. Now, this is an example of a very high performing um, homepage. And so again, what, what happens when we go here and I can tell you, we've got scroll maps, we know what, whether people scroll or not, but the majority of people, uh, a very large percentage of people come here and they, they actually just call or click the apply online and go through the process. Some percentage scroll, right? And then we've got all sorts of learn more and trust and so on, because they do everything from a couple counties to commercial, to have a realtor service and some examples of what they've done and so on. So, so you can't just focus on the top of the page, but I can promise you that, that when you look at this, a large percentage of their people, um, uh, yeah, so the question was no phone number on the landing page. Um, some people, so, so uh, Andrew, who, who I know, uh, has probably heard me say this before. Phone number is the largest trust symbol on the face of the planet, right? It is absolutely the largest trust symbol on the face of the planet. But not everybody wants, you know, a, uh, a phone call, unfortunately. So because of timing and all this, they wanted, um, they wanted the, uh, the form to be filled out and it gets put into their system, all right? Uh, right or wrong, that's the way it works. But there's such other trust on here that it solved the problem, all right? So here, on the other hand, these people are looking for both phone number as well as, um, uh, as, well as form fills, right? And so when we get here, again, doesn't matter where you came from, it was really clear what these people do. So it answers the am I in the right place question. I mean, unless you're looking for tax grievous in Texas and you wound up here because this is in Long Island, I mean, you're just confused, right? So, so it really answers the question, am I in the right place? And then the how do I feel about this? There is so much trust built into this that you know it, it it oozes almost what the what you're the number one tax grievance since 2007 as crazy as it sounds the picture of long island in the background because they're only servicing long island actually engenders trust it's a subtle way of 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 adding trust and then you've got you know pay they created this guarantee they've got the better business google ratings facebook ratings they've got the phone numbers so there's massive trust and it doesn't, they've got a very, very low bounce rate and a really nice conversion rate since this has been redesigned because it answers all three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? And what am I supposed to do here? Now, next on the list, um, I talked about uh, content pages as opposed to a you know, landing page and then a home page. This is a content page. And um, this is one that I shared previously. We have a case study on this one. Uh, that was really interesting. There, when they made the changes, and people come here, their um, their bounce rate and their exit rate actually dropped dramatically because this was designed to make people feel really good. Again, am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? And what am I supposed to do here? And you'll notice uh, because this is a content page, and we have to design for visitors. And forgive me, I know I, I say this all the time for those of you who've heard me say this before, but you have to design for your visitor as if they were lazy and or stupid. I know that sounds terrible and no disrespect meant to anybody, but, you know, people can read or will read the, uh, the word like flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion, feel confident. So they can scan this page and all, what all they're getting is a warm and fuzzy feeling that I am indeed in the right place, right? Even when they get to the part about them, founded in 2002. Well, why would we bold founded in 2002? Because it shows they've got longevity and that they've been around. Women all over the world. Oh, I'm not alone. 3,000 styles. Oh my God, I've got a lot to choose for. 150 distant brand, personalized service. This is all written for them. And interesting enough, if you unbolded everything, this would be what most people do on their site. And you would read it and go, okay, that's nice. 
But by bolding these things, it really makes a difference on how people are going to feel, okay? Um, uh, so as how they're going to feel on, on the site. So, so the question we got from Jose was, you know, there's so many things in bold, does it distract? Basically, what it does is it stops them from reading because we don't really need them to read. We're, what we're trying to do, Jose, is get them to just get an overall feeling and then do what we want them to do. And so we've tested this. And like I said, there's a case study on this that actually shows what the results were, you know, up on our website. So, so you're right. Does it distract me from reading? Yeah, but I don't care. That's not the goal. The goal is not to get someone to read. The goal is to get someone to take action and to feel good about the site, right? And so that's why we do this. You know, uh, when you look good, you feel good and you're unstoppable. We worked on the words. You'll wear it with confidence. All of this was chosen very, very carefully. And again, uh, I would encourage you to go to our site and case studies and read uh, the Blue Bungalow story, which I think is a really interesting story about all sorts of changes, not just this. This next one is interesting. Uh, Compare Cards was bought by Lending Tree. I forget how many years ago. But when we originally designed this, they told me that for 10 years, you know, almost 10 years, they tried to beat our design and have a higher converting content page, right? And uh, I mean, category page. And, and, and they could not beat it for the life of them. You know, and even after it got acquired by Lending Tree, a lot of what we put in place is still here with the Better Business Bureau and the trust symbols and the bolding. And, and uh, you know, you're not confused about what you do. It's got, you know, CBS News as a review. There's all sorts of good stuff on here. So again, it, and this, you know, and I don't know that this is still a landing page for them, but at one point it used to be a landing page. And it was, uh, this format was where they would drive traffic um, and, and whether they landed on it this way or it was a category page when they navigated through, this was, was an unbeatable page for years and years. And again, it answers the question, am I in the right place? Because you're speaking directly to the user, you know, and how do I feel about it? I feel good because there's lots of trust. And what am I supposed to do here? There is zero confusion about what you're supposed to do here. The next version of a page that I want to show you is a product page. So I'm trying to mix up a lead gen, e-commerce, all sorts of stuff so that I don't leave anybody out in the cold here. All right. This next one uh, is, a, uh, is a product page, which interestingly enough, um, turned out to be a high search landing page because people were searching for, you know, like Blaze Burners uh, or Blaze Grills, uh, which is a brand, and they would come here. And this is a very, very high converting site. Now there's a number of things on here um, that we did to increase the conversion rate. And uh, some of this is actually written up in a case study that is on, um, I wanna say it's on Webmaster Magazine. And the point of this though, is we've gotten lots of nice trust. We've got reviews here, right? Um, we've got the, we, we, we made them do this with the price and what you save and the coloring. All right, and then the, the main part of the case study was talking about this, uh, this uh, financing option. And it, interestingly enough, and it says it in the case study, by adding that financing uh, number there, um, it increased not only their conversion rate and their sales, it increased the sales of people who just bought it with a credit card. Because what happens is they look at it, they think, Oh, well, it's only $45 a month, right? I can afford $45 a month. But interestingly enough, then they get to the checkout and they go, ah, hey, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. So yes, it increased the number, overall number of people that bought. It certainly increased the number of people that financed. But as odd as it sounds, by doing that, it also increased the number of people that bought uh, with just the credit card and didn't go through the financing. So it was a win all around. But again, you know, if I search for this Blaze Grill and I land here, am I in the right place? Well, yeah, I'm in the right place. How do I feel about this? And I know I, I sound like a, a broken record, guys. All right. You know, I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But how do I feel about it? I feel really good. And what am I supposed to do here? Well, you're supposed to configure what you want. Obviously, that's the, the first step. And then after you configure it, you know, then you scroll a little bit and we expect you to actually put it to the cart. Um, 
And then the last one is the toughest one. And I'm going to show you something from our site. All right. And uh, this is a blog post of ours. And some of our blog posts do extremely well uh, in, in SEO, all right, because we, 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 we obviously understand SEO. And so we, we have some nice performing blog posts, but we were having a reasonably high bounce rate. And Alejandro, who's pictured here is one of our conversion analysts. And Alejandro said, you know what? I'm not happy with our own bounce rate. So he did an analysis and said, what's going on and why are they bouncing here? And so what can we do? So he applied what we call internally content for conversion. And so we did our own little content for conversion audit on our, our own blog posts. And we're in the process of updating them so that they all do this. This has become not only a, a blog post with a much lower bounce rate, it also is a blog post that converts. And there's multiple conversions on our blog. Anything from people signing up to the webinar, and as I show you later on, um, people actually uh, signing up for an appointment to speak with a conversion um, expert. So what did we do here to make this easier um, uh, uh, to, to be able to answer this? So we have a summary. We have a picture. We tell them how long it is to read it. All right. We tell them what part of the series it is. We actually have links to take them to the, the, to the relative points in the page. Right. So we go to that. Um, and then as they read here, we've got a number of other links throughout this where they can click and continue on. So we tried to make this interesting with, with call outs and, and bolded items. You know, then we have links within it. So if they're, if they're reading, but they want to now see a different topic, that lowers the, the bounce rate, which, by the way, when you lower the bounce rate, it absolutely not only helps with conversion rate, but it gives you more Google love, all right? So we continue through this process. And again, I'm not reading this to you, this whole thing, but there's all sorts of stuff that they can scroll through and read and see. And then at some point in here, there'll be, uh, you know, uh, another little ad about something else that they can do. All right. And we scroll a little bit further. Uh, we've got graphics in here. And again, we've tested variations of this page and, and this became the highest converting and lowest bounce rate version of it. And then when we get to the very bottom of it, what happens here is, um, and it's a long article, you know, this is, we, we ask people to either sign up for our newsletter or, or schedule a, a, a call with us. And I will tell you, we have people that go to our blog now and actually schedule a call with us. And sometimes that's the, uh, the thing we look, but uh, something, sometimes we put it down for, um, uh, you know, for a blog post, or there might be another webinar that we're doing or something like that. But this, this structure that we've created, and this is good for our site, doesn't mean it's good for yours. But by analyzing and testing, if you can lower the bounce rate, because your bounce rate on your, uh, on your blog could be bringing up your bounce rate um, for everything overall. Hopefully, you know, that made a ton of sense. All right. And it looks like we've got another question here. So let me just go back. And those are the different types of pages. And I was trying to give you some examples. And, uh, and so uh, Jim asked, have you done any tests on the phone number in the top right versus the top left of landing page or contact form or right or left? Um, and th so, and this is for a professional services site. So, so yes, Jim, we, we actually have tested the, uh, uh, the phone number in the top left or this, the top right. Uh, and, and on a desktop version, the top right wins like 99 times out of 100, okay? Now there's other things that could throw that off, coloring and what else is going on your website, but top right definitely, you know, wins, all right? Now, the form, interestingly enough, the form is a toss up because we have tested it. And sometimes the form on the left works better. Sometimes the form on the right works better. And, and even internally, sometimes we guess as to like which it is and take bets on it. And, and it's just all over the map. The form on left and right, some of that depends upon the copy. It depends upon what you're offering. And it depends upon the overall design of the website. So, you know, we've done some where the form has been on right for forever. And then we, and we tried it. We said, well, let's try it on left. And it won. And we're like, but why? You know, we, we literally just switched you know, the words and the, and the, and the form, and there's, there's no rhyme or reason. And other instances, the ones on the right answer. So 
I know that that's crazy, but you know, it, it's, there's no answer to that one other than you got to test it. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then um, Douglas asked, so time spent on pages, the homepage is important, even that's the only page they visit. Uh, it's not just time spent on it. It's really the purpose of, actually, let's back up. The purpose of a homepage is to get people off of the homepage into your site. That is the purpose of a homepage. Okay. So time on the homepage, um, and there's a couple schools of thought on this, time on the homepage is, is you know, they're there. But if they're not engaging with you and doing something, then they're still going to count as a bounce. So you really want to get them off the homepage, which is why we try to put the most important things up on the top in a homepage. Now, there's no one size fits all. Some homepages we actually do have to explain in more detail because what they're doing is just so complicated or convoluted, you know, as a service or as a product that no one is going to just dig in. So you have to give them a little bit more so they will scroll and spend some time. But the purpose of a homepage, uh, for, for, and this is a generalized statement, and which means that, so it's right eight times out of 10, nine times out of 10, is to get people off the homepage and engage with the website a little bit further on. All right, Alexandra asked, on a landing page, is a form better or call to action button that pops up a form. Well, we actually have tested that, all right, Alexandra. And I will tell you that, and again, this falls into the nine times out of 10 kind of sequence, but having the form on the page uh, is, is, is better than a pop-up. And the reason it's better um, is because you don't want to surprise people. If, if, if people get surprised by a pop-up, they'll feel like you're doing what we call greedy marketer syndrome, that you're being aggressive. And it's like, me, 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 give me your information. Give me your, where if it's just sitting there calm and you give them really good reasons to, to enter it, it feels safer because, and, and think of it this way. Uh, the example that I use all the time is we've all bought a car at some time. I think most of us have probably bought a car at some times in our life. And we go to the car dealership and, and I don't know about you folks, but a lot of times I want to take off my shoe and start beating the car salesman because they don't listen, Right. People want to feel like they're in control. They want to feel like they're safe and they're in control. So Alexandra, um, by having the form there and not surprising them with it, you're, you're basically saying, here it is. When you're ready, you can now fill this out versus pop, surprise, here I am. Give me your information. Hopefully that answered. Okay. Um, uh, Douglas asked, uh, because you're on a blog post and they're only on one page, but as long, it would be a high bounce rate. Yes. You're absolutely right, Douglas. Uh, the, the, the blog pages have a higher bounce rate than other pages. They absolutely do. I, 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 I promise you that's true. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to lower it. And that's why you want to have things that happen within the blog post that allow them to go to another piece of content or take some other action. And so, um, uh, so by doing that, you know, you can lower the bounce rate and actually start to get some conversions. Also, and I didn't show you some other examples of other um, SEO pages or content pages, um, but the concept of bolding and some of the other stuff that we've done, we've used that very successfully on page after page after page and tested, A-B tested, you know, multi, you know, we've done multivariate testing, all sorts of stuff. And we know that even with a long page, it, you know, you can you can increase the conversion rate. What I didn't say, you know, and I should say, what I didn't say is uh, when Alejandro was testing the uh, blog page, we didn't just um, use analytics. We also used heat maps and we also put trigger points that we used to report within analytics. So we knew what percentage of people were reading 25%, 50%, 75% or 100% of the article. So we were actually measuring not just the bounce rate and the conversion rate, we were also measuring the engagement by how much further people were getting based upon how we designed the page. So by having people spending more time and actually reading more, um, it correlated along with the, with the noun bounce people and the, um, uh, you know, and the conversions. That was a long-winded answer, and I'm so sorry, okay? All right, Preston uh, asked, do you ever uh, do creative testing with images, colors? Do you think it makes a big enough in impact to spend time testing? So, um, yeah, so color testing actually is something we do. 
Um, it's something we typically do early on with, with somebody because it's easy to test and get a win. And we have been shocked every once in a while, not often, but we have been shocked every once in a while by the, by the burst that we get because of the colors. Okay. And uh, we have one client who I, 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 I can't tell you who they are because of what I'm about to say next. Colors is something that we test with them. Color and messaging is something we test with them all the time. And I will tell you that colors, all right, because they're a very colorful organization, have had a massive impact. So, so, so even though it's a simple test and, and, you, and you might poo-poo it, don't poo-poo color testing. Yes, I've been talking about more complicated stuff. But it, you know, it doesn't hurt to test colors. It doesn't hurt to test titles. It doesn't hurt to do some simple things. Listen, not everything has to be a big swing in a test. You could do it, little increments over and over and over again. Also adds up. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that was so. Then Timothy asked, "Can a highly rated CRO website overcome low domain authority ranking? Can a highly rated CRO?" Web so Timothy, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to answer that question because I need a lot more, and you and I are going to be talking about. Uh, we can talk more also because I don't know how they're highly rated. I don't know what we're trying to get them to do. So I think Tim, you and I are going to talk separately. I'm sorry, everyone, because I'm not sure. But I know Tim, so you all just don't get the answer to Tim's question because I'm not sure what he's asking. Sorry, Tim. And Jose asked, uh, "Yeah, we'll take this offline. Sorry, buddy." And Jose asked, would you run a color code, I green for positive actions, red for warnings? Um, some of that is cultural, okay? Uh, so you do want to be careful with words and with colors uh, in different, because uh, we test across the globe. And, you know, what works in one country may not work in another country. Um, some of the stuff, uh, you know, doesn't matter. It, it, the Really, the big issue in colors is contrast, Okay. So one of the things that we, we tested uh, and learned is if you have a high contrast color with the background, uh, that typically increases the conversion rate. So we have seen red, you know, really like pop off a page and be the best converting um, color for a particular website based on their color palette. But understand that red, you know, at least in a lot of places means stop, but because of the contrast, and because it was the right color on that website, you know, it worked. There is no one size fits all on colors, all right? But contrast is the thing that actually makes uh, uh, makes the uh, makes the the right answer. So, Jose, instead of continually testing, um, no, I'm sorry, buddy. You're, you're going to have to test because every website's different. I mean, once you get there, I, look. At some point when you're testing and going back to your continually testing question, at some point you got to say, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten as much juice out of that as I possibly can. Let me work on some other testing, which could be business model testing or whatever. So folks, I want to thank you for all the questions and, and I'm willing to stay another minute or two, but, but, you know, we've gone past, I asked for an hour for the, for this, we've spent the hour. Um, I, I, I'd love to answer a question or two more. Hopefully you found this interesting. I would like you to, if you could, in the um, in the uh, uh, the survey you get, I would like to know if this was an interesting topic, if this was too basic. I, I would love, because this was new for me, and I'm asking for your help to tell me what you thought of it. All right, folks? So, all right. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So I guess with that, oh. So uh, thanks so much. That was helpful. Me, okay. Thank you uh, for the anonymous attendee. <laughs> so all good. Hopefully that wasn't one of my team, one of my team people, <laughs> and Rich. So all good. I right, well, thank you all. Have a wonderful day, and we'll be having another webinar uh, uh, inspired by another chapter in the book in about a month. Uh, so look out for um, uh, for that uh, in your email. Thanks, and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye, all. <laughs>